May our Father, Messiah, and the Holy Spirit be with us. 2 Samuel chapter 2. After this, David inquired of our Father in heaven, Shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? Our Father said to him, Go up. David said, To which shall I go up? He said, To Hebron. So David went up there along with his two wives, Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David brought up the men who were with him, every one with his household, and they settled in the towns of Hebron. Then the people of Judah came, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. When they told David it was the people of Jabesh Gilead who buried Saul, David sent messengers to the people of Jabesh Gilead and said to them, May you be blessed by our Father in heaven, because you showed this loyalty to Saul your Lord and buried him. Now may our Father in heaven show steadfast love and faithfulness to you. And I too will reward you because you have done this thing. Therefore, let your hands be strong and be valiant. For Saul, your Lord, is dead. And the house of Judah has anointed me king over them. But Abner, son of Ner, commander of Saul's army, had taken Ishbaal, son of Saul, and brought him over to Mahanaim. He made him king over Gilead, the Asherites, Jezreel, Ephraim, Benjamin, and over all Israel. Ishbaal, Saul's son, was 40 years old when he began to reign in Israel, and he reigned two years. But the house of Judah followed David. The time that David was king in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. Abner, son of Ner, and the servants of Ishbaal, son of Saul, went out from Mahanaim to Gibeon. Joab, son of Zeruiah, and the servants of David went out to meet them at the pool of Gibeon. One group sat on one side of the pool, while the other sat on the other side of the pool. Abner said to Joab, let the young men come forward and have a contest before us. Joab said, let them come forward. So they came forward and were counted as they passed by. 12 for Benjamin and Ishbaal, son of Saul, and 12 of the servants of David. Each grasped his opponent by the head and thrust his sword in his opponent's side, so they fell down together. Therefore, that place was called Helkath Hazurim, which is at Gibeon. The battle was very fierce that day, and Abner and the men of Israel were beaten by the servants of David. The three sons of Zeruiah were there, Joab, Ibashai, or Abishai, and Asahel. Now Asahel was as swift of foot as a wild gazelle. Asahel pursued Abner, turning neither to the right nor to the left as he followed him. Then Abner looked back and said, Is it you, Asahel? He said, Yes, it is. Abner said to him, Turn to your right or to your left, and seize one of the young men, and take his spoil. But Asahel would not turn away from following him. Abner said again to Asahel, Turn away from following me. Why should I strike you to the ground? How then could I show my face to your brother Joab? But he refused to turn away. So Abner struck him in the stomach with the butt of the spear, so that the spear came out at his back. He fell there and died where he lay. And all those who came to the place where Asahel had fallen and died stood still. But Joab and Abishai pursued Abner. As the sun was going down, they came to the hill of Amma, which lies before Gaia on the way to the wilderness of Gibeon. The Benjamites rallied around Abner and formed a single band. They took their stand on the top of a hill. Then Abner called to Joab, Is the sword to keep devouring forever? Do you not know that the end will be bitter? How long will it be before you order your people to turn from the pursuit of their kinsmen? Joab said, As God lives, if you had not spoken, the people would have continued to pursue their kinsmen, not stopping until morning. Joab sounded the trumpet and all the people stopped. They no longer pursued Israel or engaged in battle any further. Abner and his men traveled all that night through Arabah. They crossed the Jordan and marching the whole forenoon, they came to Mahanaim. Joab returned from the pursuit of Abner. And when he had gathered all the people together, 
there were missing of David's servants 19 men besides Asahel. But the servants of David had killed of Benjamin 360 of Abner's men. They took up Asahel and buried him in the tomb of his father, which was at Bethlehem. Joab and his men marched all night, and the day broke upon them at Hebron. Chapter 3 There was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. David grew stronger and stronger, while the house of Saul became weaker and weaker. Sons were born to David at Hebron. His firstborn was Amnon and Ahinoam of Jezreel. His second, Chiliab of Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. The third, Absalom, son of Maacah, daughter of King Talmai of Geshur. The fourth, Adonijah, son of Hagith. The fifth, Shephatiah, son of Abital. And the sixth, Ithriam of David's wife, Egla. These were born to David in Hebron. While there was war between the house of Saul and the house of David, Abner was making himself strong in the house of Saul. Now Saul had a concubine whose name was Rispa, daughter of uh, Aiah. And Ishbaal said to Abner, why have you gone into my father's concubine? The words of Ishbaal made Abner very angry. He said, am I a dog's head for Judah? Today I keep showing loyalty to the house of your father, Saul, to his brothers and to his friends and have, and have not given you into the hand of David. And yet you charge me now with a crime concerning this woman. So may God do to Abner and so may he add to it. For just what our father in heaven has sworn to David, that I will accomplish for him. To transfer the kingdom from the house of Saul and set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah from Don to Beersheba. And Ishbael could not answer Abner another word because he feared him. Abner sent messengers to David at Hebron, saying, To whom does the land belong? Make your covenant with me, and I will give you my support to bring all Israel over to you. He said, Good, I will make a covenant with you. But one thing I require of you, you shall never appear in my presence unless you bring Saul's daughter, Michal, when you come to see me. Then David sent messengers to Saul's son Ishbaal, saying, Give me my wife Michal, to whom I became engaged at the price of 100 foreskins of the Philistines. Ishbaal sent and took her from her husband Paltiel, the son of Laish. But her husband went with her, weeping as he walked behind her all the way to Bahurim. Then Abner said to him, Go back home. So he went back. Abner sent word to the elders of Israel, saying, for some time past, you have been seeking David as king over you. Now then, bring it about, for our Father in heaven has promised David. Through my servant David, I will save my people Israel from the hand of the Philistines and from all their enemies. Abner also spoke directly to the Benjamites. Then Abner went to tell David at Hebron all that Israel and the whole house of Benjamin were ready to do. When Abner came with 20 men to David at Hebron, David made a feast for Abner and the men who were with him. Abner said to David, Let me go and rally all Israel to my lord the king, in order that they make a covenant with you, and that you may reign over all your heart desires. So David dismissed Abner, and he went away in peace. Just then the servants of David arrived with Joab from the raid, bringing much spoil with them. But Abner was not with David at Hebron, for David had dismissed him and he had gone away in peace. When Joab and all the army that was with him came, it was told Joab, Abner, son of Ner, came to the king, and he has dismissed him, and he has gone away in peace. Then Joab went to the king and said, What have you done? Abner came to you. Why did you dismiss him, so that he got away? You know that Abner, son of Ner, came to deceive you, and to learn your comings and goings, and to learn all that you were doing. When Joab came out from David's presence, he sent messengers after Abner, and they brought him back from the cistern of Sidah. But David did not know about it. When Abner returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside in the gateway to speak with him privately, and there he stabbed him in the stomach. So he died for shedding the blood of Asael, Joab's brother. Afterward, when David heard of it, he said, I am my kingdom are forever guiltless before our Father in heaven for the blood of Abner, son of Ner. May the guilt fall on the head of Joab and on all his father's house, 
and may the house of Joab never be without one who has a discharge or who is leprous or who holds a spindle or who falls by the sword or who lacks food. So Joab and his brother Abishai murdered Abner because he killed their brother Asahel in the battle at Gibeon. Then David said to Joab and to all the people who were with him, tear your clothes and put on sackcloth and mourn over Abner. And, da and King David followed the bier. They buried Abner at Hebron. The king lifted up his voice and wept at the grave of Abner and all the people wept. The king lamented for Abner saying, should Abner die as a fool dies? Your hands were not bound. Your feet were not fettered. As one falls before the wicked, you have fallen. And all the people wept over him again. Then all the people came to persuade David to eat something while it was still day. But David swore, saying, So may God do to me, and more, if I taste bread or anything else before the sun goes down. All the people took notice of it, and it pleased them, just as everything the king did pleased all the people. So all the people and all Israel understood that day that the king had no part in killing of Abner son of Ner. And the king said to his servants, Do you not know that a prince and a great man has fallen this day in Israel? Today I am powerless, even though anointed king. These men, the sons of Zeruiah, are too violent for me. Our father in heaven, pay back the one who does wickedly in accordance with his wickedness. Father willing, we will continue with 2 Samuel chapter 4. May our Father, Messiah, and the Holy Spirit be with us. Repent, the kingdom of heaven is near. Peace.